Now, the RTX 5070 is surprisingly a very good overclocker. So if you want to spend literally five minutes of your time to get around 10% free performance, well, this is the right video for you. So welcome back at Angotin PSUs. Now, disclaimer, this is going to increase your power consumption, your temperature a little bit, maybe potentially your noise. If you want to get more performance without increasing those, maybe you don't have the best case, maybe you don't have the best model of GPU, I recommend you guys go ahead and undervolt. And for that, I have a video on the channel and I cover every single CPU and GPU in the world on this channel. And by the way, if you want to help me out, maybe drop a like and subscribe, but after you follow the tutorial, okay? With that said, this is gonna work for every single model of GPU, no matter the brand. We have here a Zota card, but it's gonna work for MSI, Gigabyte, Asus, Inno 3D. Doesn't matter, every single model, even from stranger brands like Colorful or something. We're gonna be using MSI Afterburner and Heaven Benchmark for the undervolting, which again are universal. You're gonna find them down below in the description. I'm gonna be using the stable version for Afterburner. If you want to use the beta version, you can. The settings are the same, but please go ahead and cross-reference this video with my RTX 5070 Ti overclocking video where I use the beta version and explain how it works. So with that said, let's start overclocking. Now, the first thing we want to do is open up Heaven Benchmark right here, and you wanna run it with these settings. Quality Ultra, Tessellation Extreme, Anti-Aliasing X8, uncheck the full screen option and run it at 2560 by 1440, even if you have a different monitor. Now run it. Now you wanna open up Afterburner on top of it, and then we can actually start overclocking. First of all, if you wanna just copy my setting without really thinking about it too much, well, two minutes overclocking. Just unlock this to the maximum, put 300 over here, put 2000 over here, hit apply, and uh, we are basically done. So we can now save our profile by going save, Save into one, click on one, click apply, go into settings, start with windows, start minimized, hit apply, hit okay, click over here, and uh, you can close the video, drop a like and subscribe and enjoy your 10% free performance. But in case you wanna actually see a little procedure on how to do this and my numbers, here we are. Basically, I want all of you guys to start from 300 because 300 is my work for every single one of you. This is in the core clock. And now I find the luckiest card can do around 400, but on average, your driver limited at 375. So you can try 375 out. Let us know how it goes. You always want to have our power limit unlocked. Now you're probably wondering, what about our core voltage? Because on some cars, you can actually give it a little extra. And now to do that, you need to go into settings, unlock voltage monitoring, voltage control, and you can then max it out. But this is gonna increase your heat output, your power output, and I don't recommend you do it because on average you can get maybe 20 or 30 megahertz extra in my testing. And it's just not worth it for the extra heat and also for pumping more voltage in your car. So don't do that. How should you go about finding your core clock is you start from 300 and you go up 50 at a time. Then you test in game. And if the game doesn't crash, you keep going up by 50. Okay, so you go, for example, 400. Let's say that at 400 your game crashes, then you go back by 25 and you go at 375. And then if this doesn't crash, then to achieve absolute stability, from the point you find stable, you go back another 25. So if 400 crashes, 375 is stable, 350 is gonna be the number to be at. This is it for the core clock, again. For the memory, uh, if you have the new Afterburner version or the beta, you can actually go higher than 2000. Uh, but I find the maximum I can do stable is about 2500 in most cars. And again, same procedure as I would do in the core clock, but instead of going up by 50, I would go up by 200 and I would go back by 100, but it's the same for the rest. However, really, trust me, memory isn't really giving you that much extra performance. Just settle on 2000 and you'll be happy. And uh, with that said, very short video, wanted to keep it simple. Let us know what your overclocks end up being so people can take a look at it. And of course, if you watched the video this far, drop a like and subscribe. Bye-bye.